What's up guys, Xavier here with you on Paramount Network's The Peak. As you can tell, I'm here on the official red carpet for the premiere of 68 Whiskey. We've got special guests, we've got the entire cast going to be coming down here. I'm going to try and talk to every single one of them, so stay tuned and we'll see who we can find. Hey, how are you? Good, Way taller in real life than I expected. Oh, oh no, I'm wearing, uh, I'm wearing very tall. Wow, huge yeah, heels, too. huge heels. Okay, great. <laughs> Glad we cleared that up. Yeah. You got them covered really well too. Uh, well, I like the illusion of maybe like I'm walking on stilts. Maybe I'm just this tall, yeah. you know. But Who knows? You know the secret now, yeah. so don't tell. Me. Sorry, we just got it on camera too. Oh, no. But oh, uh, no, knows. I'm yeah. not really a giant. <laughs> For sure. Okay, so I've luckily seen a couple of episodes. Loving it so far. Love your character. How can you? For those of us who haven't seen it, how would you summarize your uh, your character and what you're all about? Uh, my character, she she's got a very tough exterior, but she has a really big heart. She really just wants to help everyone and make sure everyone has what they need. Um, and so being a part of wanting to help Alvarez and help Roback and help Davis, it's just she has such a big heart and she's constantly trying to put it out there, but it's not necessarily always received. Like nobody's necessarily out there watching her back. So it's kind of an interesting push and pull on my character of like, how much do you give without expecting something in return? Gotcha. Okay. And how, what was the hardest thing about preparing for something like this? Have you played a role like this before? I have not. No. Um, honestly, just coming at it and wanting to be as respectful as possible to members who serve in the military because I have family and friends who have served and who are currently serving and so I just wanted to be as accurate as possible and as respectful as possible. Great. Well, brings me to my next point. Speaking of accuracy, how accurate is it to have um, people serving in the military that are also Instagram influencers as well? Gosh, I wish I could speak on that because I think it would be kind of a genius idea. Um, but quite honestly, I do know for a fact that military cannot display a lot of their uniforms in uh, a public manner, like on a social media platform. Right. Um, so it's kind of a fun twist, but you know, we're making TV here and we're having fun with it. Were you surprised to see that in the script? Absolutely. I was like, oh, that's kind of a cool side hustle. Like if I was in the military, I would probably do that too. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. And what was the, uh, I know I was very, I mean, it's also, you don't often see a sort of a comedy based um, um, army, army series, and then with that as well, it's like, whoa, it really is 2020, what's going on? Um, and what do you think, in your opinion, what do you think people are going to love most about this series? Uh, I think people are going to love how big it is and how gritty and authentic. I mean, this show has something for everyone. Every character has some huge flaw that someone can relate to or a really big strength that someone can relate to. I mean, everybody has wonderful um, breaking points that just you're going to want to watch, yeah. you know? And great chemistry, if I can add so that. So much chemistry. Sure. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Gage. Thank I really appreciate it. Cheers. I got less than 2,000 likes and it's been up almost three whole days. We were holding it upside down. Not funny. <laughs> Dirk and she's standoffish, rough around the edges, but she has a really big heart. I think I can convince the company I model for to make me a brand ambassador. You got it all figured out, huh? She's not looking to be popular. She's formulating a plan to get out and get her next step. Dirk and Roback are purely physical. I'm curious what's going to happen with them. I hope there's more to their story. Mate, congratulations! Cheers, I think mate. you've, uh, I think you've, I've seen a couple of episodes. Absolutely nailed it. Um, probably my favorite character, not gonna lie. Uh, <laughs> for those of us who haven't seen the seen the series yet, can you sum up your character a little bit for us? Yeah, I play Cooper Roback. He's a kid from Hemet in California. Uh, doesn't come from the best upbringing in the world, but you know, he's he's got a big heart, and he's kind of the glue of the medics. You know, both in a positive way and in a negative way as in he holds everybody together and he also gets all over everything and sticks together stuff that you don't necessarily want, you know what yeah. I mean? He's a mess. But he does it with the best intentions and I think it's just interesting to watch him grow, particularly throughout this first season and, and you know, see him kind of find his own way. Right, so in the, uh, you have a pretty epic opening 10 minutes, you know, there's a, uh... There's lots going on. I don't know how much I can say, but you know, you're <laughs> fighting, you're doing lots of different things. Yeah. Have you ever played a, a busier character? Never. Never. This this character on the page to me was so terrifying. It was so scary to go like, okay, I have to be not only I have to be like culturally relevant and be a, an American convincingly, I also have to fight. I have to run. I have to pick people up. I have to carry a gun. I have to do a few other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wear modesty underwear. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's uh, it was it was a huge challenge for me. But that's part of why I loved it so much, and part of why I I went for it. And I was like, absolutely, I have to do it. So given all those things you just mentioned, what was the hardest thing for you to get down to nail this character? Um, 
I, I had a martial arts background. I did martial arts for like 15 years, so that wasn't a huge issue. I just had to learn how to like not hit people, which I unfortunately hit Derek by accident in the face during. He that. seems like a kind of guy who could take it. He's all right. Yeah, yeah. he'd be all right. Yeah. Um, and then to me, honestly, it was like the transition from carrying someone on your shoulder, laying them down, and then having to do something like either decompress their lungs, clear their airway, because your dexterity goes because of the adrenaline. So it, it was almost like, you know that thing where people do, they like box and they play chess in between rounds of boxing? Yeah. It was like you needed to sharpen both sides of wow. your psyche because once you got into the chopper and you had to get into medical zone, it was like your hands just wouldn't do the thing. So that was a big thing for me, of like getting my blood up when I was at home, like working out, doing press ups, and then trying to tie like a, Sewing. a thread yeah. or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and just trying to make just things that, you'd uh, never even think about. So right. And, yeah. well, and really quick, what about the, uh, the accent? Yeah, I mean, the accent, I stay in the accent full time. I mean, used to it by now. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I saw a dialect coach and, and I have been, I played probably more Americans than I played Irish people. Yeah. And this is the first time some of the guys are even hearing my real accent tonight. So, wow. yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. okay. And uh, and really quick, man, I know that uh, obviously Ron Howard had a bit to do with this series. Yeah. Did you have any uh, any exposure to him and how he worked or? I mean, I worked with Ron and, okay. and Brian six years ago on a film called In the Heart of the Sea. Okay. And uh, it was the true story of Moby Dick. And, and yeah, I worked with Ron for six months. So I had a relationship with him already and so when his name popped up on the script I immediately was like I have to go for this um, and I think you know he was a big influence in, in in you know helping other people kind of see that I was right for this part also so it was it was great and I'm so happy to be working with him again it's brilliant perfect man well congratulations cheers dude cheers mate cheers, yeah. can you hear me you speak English and French and German <laughs> and okay okay no need to brag Cooper Roback is all instinct and emotion and he's, yeah, he's, he's a live wire. I don't think he respects authority very much. I know he doesn't respect authority very much. Am I gonna get in trouble? No, this guy's an authority over us. You men need to stay far away from here. Why do we do that? He's a guy who will do things his own way. He'll take his own path regardless of the consequences and very selflessly at times too. Like he's a guy who breaks the rules and he's a bit of a badass, but at the same time, I feel like he possibly in his past had to run away from a lot of things. Student loan? Nah, it's just some unfinished business from home. That's why we're here instead of there, right? He's a medic at the end of the day. Like he's the guy who jumps in when the guns are going off and, and the soldiers need patching up and he'll go out of his way to get the job done and it won't be clean, and it won't be pretty, but it, it'll be done. What's up, man? How you doing? Good, good to meet you. I'm Xavier. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Dude, I gotta, I gotta admit, I gotta say it right now, I th I've seen two episodes. My favorite character. Oh, is that right? I really appreciate that. That's kind, good to hear. Thank kind you. of a badass. <laughs> uh, how, for those of us who haven't seen it, how would you summarize your character? I think Makai Davis, first of all, is a 68 Whiskey. He's a combat medic. He's out there saving lives helping wounded soldiers, and along with that, he has a lot going on in his personal life. So you do see his personal motivation to try to do things outside of his purview as a soldier to get money for his family. So sometimes they're getting into trouble, but it's all for the purpose of trying to help his, pe his people. Gotcha. Okay, and how did you, uh, how did, I mean, I don't know if you've played these kinds of roles before, but how did you sort of prepare for this? How did you get in the mindset? Well, I started by reading some books. The first book I read was called Combat Medic, and there's another one, 21st Century Combat Medic. I wanted to get the real life experiences of people who operated as 68 Whiskeys. And so after reading some books, I started with those two and ended up reading a few more uh, documentaries. I did some firearms training uh, out here and, and was put through a whole course and learned how to operate the weapon as a soldier would. Um, under several different types of circumstances. And then in addition to that, so a little bit of medical training, learning how to do the medical procedures that are required in the show. Um, so quite a bit, and, and in addition to all of that, and probably one of the best parts of my research and process is having family members who served. My uncle was a sergeant in the army in Afghanistan a few years ago. and. Uh, that, along with some of the other people who I've been able to talk to and ask, has provided a whole lot of information for me to try to be authentic. Right. Love it. And, man, one of the, uh, one of the lines that I've seen on the trailer that I loved, and it was my, my favorite, was yours saying, I didn't come from the streets of Chicago to get ripped off by drug dealers. <laughs> yeah, everybody likes that. Right? You kind of bring a bit of masculinity, a bit of street. Like, was that important to you? <laughs> yes. I think, well, because he's from Chicago. He's from the south side. And so... 
him being a soldier, he's seen a lot. And he has a temperament that makes him able to do what he's able to do, but he's not scared. And I think that's one of the things you find with a lot of the soldiers, they're not afraid. Him being from the south side of Chicago, he's really not afraid. Right, so your character wasn't afraid. If you were in a, uh, in a cave in Afghanistan with guns pointed at you in real life, would you have been that confident? If I was? Yeah. No, I wouldn't have been that confident. <laughs> I oh. would have probably needed a change of pants. <laughs> Me too. I'm glad we can, can. I'm glad we can agree on that, man. I didn't come all the way here from the south side of Chicago to get ripped off by drug dealers. My name is Jeremy Tardy, and I play Makai Davis. So Makai is from Inglewood, and it's a very rough area. He's a really good combat medic. Going in the shark. But he's also trying to take care of his people back home. His mother has cancer. She got a call from the hospital, filing a suit against her for unpaid medical bills. And so he's trying to figure out side hustles. Probably 20 grand worth of rugs in that truck. We stand to make a lot of cash here. I think he's relatable because he's an everyday kind of guy. And I think for a lot of the men and women who serve, they serve to be able to do something wonderful. Yeah, yeah. It's OK. It's OK. You took it like a pro kid. He's in it for those honorable moral reasons, but he's also in it because he needs to work. We got anything better to do? So he, he answered this call. <laughs> Let's do this. How are you, man? Great. How feeling you? good? Yeah, I feel great. Hell yeah, dude. All right, so loved your character. I got, I've had a sneak peek. I got, um, I've seen a couple of episodes. Got a lot of questions about that goat, but we'll get to it. Um, mate, so tell me, Tell me a little bit about your character for those of you, for those of us who haven't seen. Okay, uh, I play the character Anthony Petrocelli. He's a 17-year-old kid who looks 16 and he acts 15. He's basically just the the baby of the group. He uh, wants to be a really good soldier, tries to stick by the rules. But um, I guess his journey throughout the show is he learns that you kind of need to break the rules a little bit in order to kind of get in with the older guys and to kind of experience and survive Afghanistan. Right, okay. I didn't realize, can 17 year olds even get into the army? Is that a thing? Yeah, I, I remember asking about that when we first started. I think, I think this is correct. If you're 17, you have to have both your parents sign you in. Okay. So uh, I guess both his parents. Yeah, that's awkward. cruel. It's cruel parenting there. Jeez, man. And how did you, um, first of all, Aussie pride here. Aside from the accent, how did you, uh, how did you prepare for this role, man? How did you get into character? Um, yeah, I mean, besides the accent, I honestly watched as many military shows and films as I could. I uh, watched a bunch of documentaries um, on YouTube and other streaming sites. So I kind of did as much research as I could, but then also on set we have military advisors for every right. department, so. I guess, the, I guess the difference is, I mean, I haven't seen too many sort of comedy army films. So that was, was that a, an interesting sort of twist to put on it? Yeah, I mean, it, it's cool because the comedy aspect is, it's not like, dumb comedy, it's not like slapstick, it's it's the soldiers trying to laugh at how messed up the situation is that they're in. So I think that the writers have done a really clever job at showing what you kind of actually have to do to survive in these zones. Uh, you have to kind of be positive about the situation because it's not a positive situation. Sure, yeah, I guess it's all you can do is laugh, right? Yeah. Kinda and, um, and man, so I hear the goat has its own Instagram account, make sure you follow it. Um, was it, was this goat as friendly? in real life as it seemed in uh, on screen. Uh, yeah, honestly, it's great. We were a bit worried at the start because we didn't know, you know, how a goat's going to react. I've never personally worked with one before. But uh, the trainers did an amazing job. There was two different goats we had and uh, they'd swap them out depending on what the scene was and what it needed to do. They had, one was trained to hit a mark, one was trained to fetch a stick. So uh, it's fantastic, man. Perfect. Yeah. And then you were, so you were the baby on the show. Were you the baby on set as well? Uh, I think I'm the youngest on set, but we're all around the same age and we're all good friends, so it's been fantastic. Perfect, yeah. man. Well, congratulations again. Thank you. Great work, dude. Step away from that explosive goat. It's not a bomb. Yeah, that's what they want you to think. <laughs> now move so I can engage the threat. I am not moving. Yeah, well, I ain't getting blown up by no goddamn suicide goat either. It's not a suicide goat. <laughs> Don't worry, boss. I'm not going to let anything happen to you. Righto, boys. So you're here to support tonight. You're in another another hit show of your own. What do you have? You seen any of this uh, of 68 whiskey? I've seen uh, the the full length trailers that have been that have been out, okay. and I, I I got the script several months ago, so I was able to read it. 
Okay. And just, I'm looking that's more to than that. That's more than that. I got the full length trailer, and that's all I got. Okay. Yeah. But it looks phenomenal. So it's it's fascinating to to read words without any context, without any tone, and go like, what? Are, how are they going to make this? Is it going to be like mash, or is it going to be like platoon? Sure. And then and you know you see. Um, the, the trailer, so you get a sense of it, but still, I'm not quite sure, you know, what to expect. How, yeah, how they're gonna do it. So I'm looking forward to. Seeing but it's it. such a phenomenal thing because, especially for us being on Yellowstone, but then seeing something that's on the other side of the the spectrum, like more in the military world, but also like super kind of like big. Yeah. It's kind of fascinating. Instead of horses, there's tanks and airplanes. So it's a it's a, kind of like where Paramount's going with all of this. Yeah, it's yeah. a big it's a big kind of network that loves the action. Yeah, I think you have to be really diverse as a as a as a new network and have different kinds of, of shows for different kinds of people and they can't all be the same and I think this is gonna be a lot different than our show yeah tonally specifically I think it's got a it's got a lot of cheekiness that I think that I saw in the trailer and I think that I read so well, that's it I was about to ask you what are you most looking forward to seeing out of this series I think I just want to see what it looks like I think I'm so fascinated because the characters are so diverse and they have like this boxing thing that they do, which seems like an outlet, like after work, yep. which is kind of like a fight club type of thing, which is kind of cool, which I kind of was like, I think I want to do that. Uh, <laughs> season two, season two. I, I think I'm most excited to see how you bring humor to it when an overall awful location situation yeah. and make it humane and and make just like that make yeah. you go oh i can i can laugh at this in some right. way and that, it's okay and you yeah. make you normalize it so i want to see and that's why i used i think of mash you know when i was when i was young that was kind of the same idea i've only seen a couple of episodes but they toe the line on that really well you've seen so you've seen i've couple. seen two episodes yeah they do they do a really good you job but i just want to know what i want to i wanted to know what you thought 68 whiskey is a combat medic they're the first guys out there for injured soldiers out on the front line I served in Iraq with an infantry unit. I'm very impressed with the, the level of authenticity. Actual 68 whiskeys would come and describe everything. A lot of the process was just listening to everything that he has to say. Do not leave me here. You speak English? And French. And German. And OK, OK, no need to brag. What's up, mate? You are good. You are massive in real life. It's, uh, it's, not, just, it's not just on screen tricks. Well, some of it is, I think. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, seriously? Mate, I, uh, I've seen a little bit of the series so far, loved it, loved your character. For everyone who hasn't seen it, hasn't seen it yet, can you sum up about what, a little bit about what your character's all about? Yeah, um, uh, my character's name is Sasquatch. I'm uh, ex-Special Forces. Yeah, I know, the beard doesn't give it away, right? But I'm ex-Special Forces, uh, currently working as a government contractor, kind of like a mercenary. And um, I'm um, I'm the questionable bad guy of the show. Uh, mate, so you've got the you've also got the look down part. Did you? What was the most difficult thing for you about preparing for a role like this, or was it pretty natural? Um, it, it's yeah, it, it was quite not natural, I guess. I, I grew up on a military base. I always wanted to play a soldier, wow. so this was kind of a dream come true. But in the past, with my career, I've always kind of played like a good guy or a funny guy. So getting to play the bad guy for once was also a really uh, unique experience. And as far as getting prepared for the role, like he's a you know he's a, a trained fighter, a technical fighter. So that was one of the hardest parts. Like I, I lift weights, I'm I'm pretty well versed with with guns. But uh, when it comes to the, the MMA stuff, that's what I really had to work on and work right. with the stunt team for. Well, that's you know that was my next question. I'm like we're all I was we're talking before and saying you look, did look like a natural in there in the first couple of minutes. You're in the ring type of thing. Was are you an MMA guy or was this is fighting not your thing? Um, yeah, I, I don't have much experience like like in the in the ring or the octagon, but I, I have done quite a bit of stunt training before, and I, I felt like I picked it up pretty quickly and pretty well, and uh, we just we worked it out. We worked really hard on that on that scene and for that day, and I'm, I'm happy with the way it came out. Nice man. And what do you think? Uh, what do you think people are going to be most excited to uh, about? What do you think is most special about this series? People are going to like. That's a hard one to answer too, because the first thing that, that jumps out to me is the production value. You know, we're we're shooting practically on Black Hawk helicopters out in the desert we're, we're using real guns all of that's really incredible and cinematic but I think the thing that sets the show apart is the relationship that we have on base with each other and um, and how the show's kind of all about that it's all it's all about the people on base and what's happening inside of it and more and in less of you know the actual enemy we're fighting right man well look you did a great job and uh, everyone's gonna really love your character man I can see it thanks so much for major Holloway can find you to base so you being out here is a clear violation of a direct order. You're not going to tell me, are you? I'm Derek Thieler. I play Roger McCulley. 
better known as Sasquatch. Actually, I don't think anyone on base knows his real name. I've got a fighter. I think he could take Sasquatch. He's done the military thing, and now he's set court. You don't know if Sasquatch is a bad guy. Set Corp can not only do whatever they want, they also get paid for it 10 times more than we do. His morality is questioned often because these Set Corp guys, they're known for being shady. The whole uh, relationship between the Army guys and the Set Corp guys is really important for the through line of the show, I think. We know it was you guys. You left the goat behind with one of my men's fingers in its belly. Did the goat give us up? In a lot of ways, he's a good guy, too, because he's with Durkin. But nobody sees how affectionate and how vulnerable he is to Durkin. And that's the only person that makes him that way. It kind of turns him into a puppy dog. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> well, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. I've seen a little bit of the series. I loved it. What can you tell us about your character for those of us who haven't seen the series yet? Well, Rosa Alvarez, which is my character, she's she's going through a lot right now. Her family is be, being deported. She's Mexican, but she, I mean, her country is the United States of America. She, she, she's been raised in this country all her life. She joined the army. She, they promised her citizenship. And when she's out there in Afghanistan, they tell her that her family is being deported and that she might be deported as well. So that's a little bit of my character. I, I'm okay. Right. There. right. So you got to, you got two two wars to, to battle there. Exactly. The the personal and the professional one. So yeah. It's... Okay. Nice. And what was what would you say was the most difficult thing for you to get down to nail really nail this character? I would say the medical things. Okay. It's pretty hard. I mean, we we were all very nervous because we have to do it right. We really wanted to do it right. Thank God we had the all 68 whiskeys every single day on set with us. The real 68 whiskeys that were in Afghanistan that fought for this country. They were like telling us step by step what to do, what not to do. Okay, yeah. nice. And just really quick to finish up, what do you think people are going to love most about this series? Uh, the goat, I guess. <laughs> I thought you were going to say your character, but yeah, the goat. Yeah, the goat has been like a... a the biggest character so far, so I'm gonna say the goat. I'm not, I'm not gonna brag about myself. I'll okay. brag about the goat. Very <laughs> humble, very humble. Well, thank you so much, Christina. What you do is important. You didn't have to go out on that mission, but you did. I respect bravery and a sense of duty when I see it. Thank you, sir. I'm Christina Rotlo, and I play Rosa Alvarez. She's an immigrant, and she found a way to get in the army to have a better life to have a career and to also help people. Hey, hey, look at me, look at me, stay with me, stay with me. She wants to be a doctor at some point, but she's going through a lot of things right now because her, her family has been deported and she's fighting for this country who just deported her family. Why are we still here? She, she tries to stay very positive. She believes in what she's doing. She's very passionate about her friends as well. But when you go through those things and you try to stay positive, I think that's when people are gonna root for her because she just keeps fighting. If you go your own way, you don't care what anyone else thinks, you're badass. Jeez, you're in just as intimidating in real life as you are on screen. <laughs> you're, a, you're a big man. All smoke and mirrors. Mate, tell me, uh, tell me about your character. Sum it up for those of us who haven't seen the, uh, seen the show. I play Colonel Harlan Oscar. You even sort of stand like a cow. I'm going to tell you why in just a second. My father served in the Army. My stepfather served in the Air Force. Wow. That's what I was raised by. Okay. So your back was always straight. There was no fooling around. Wow. There were no mistakes. Yeah. None of that was allowed. I feel like you're kind of making me want to be a better a better man right now, you know? You're I'm, doing just fine. Thank you. <laughs> you would have, so you really slipped into this role pretty easily then? It was pretty easy. But Look, the I'm, I'm already doing it. I'm doing this right now. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, it's well written. As this is, it's easy to fall into. The writing is just fantastic. Right. Um, and all of the production work that you need as an actor to, 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 to do the work that you do was in place. So that research, that homework, and all of that is just very easy to fall in and just do your job. Gotcha. And, and I don't know if I think I interrupted you before. I apologize. But if you can, can you sum up your character a little bit for us? Yes. Uh, his name is Colonel Harlan Austin. He's the commanding officer of the base. And if there's a human being there, they answer to him. The buck stops with him. Um, you know, it's, it's like he's got 2,000 kids. So he is a father figure. So he does care about everyone under his command. Uh, but he's ultimately tough and fair. That's the thing. He's got to be fair. 
He comes from a long line of soldiers, all of whom have served in every combat mission in our history. And he goes all the way back. And because of that, he has a very unique sense of, of how battles are supposed to work, how to command people, how to lead, because he doesn't do anything else. He's never known anything else. And if he was to get out of the service, his life would fall apart. That's who he is. He's a career soldier. Wow, okay, so when you, uh, when you auditioned for this, like, I mean, what was the hard, I, I was gonna say what was the hardest thing about preparing for a role like this, but is this something that comes, comes very naturally to you given your, uh, your upbringing? Well, I've played a lot of authority figures. I tend to, to line up with those. I just tend to book them whenever I audition for them. It's just, I bring a certain thing that people like, that they believe, yeah. and I'm blessed to be able to do that. And it all just lined up for me with this part. Roberto thought of me, I came in, things worked out, here I am. Nice, and uh, just, just to wrap it up, what do you think people are really gonna like about, uh, about this series? What people are gonna like about the series is, I'm gonna give you one word, humans. We, we bring the, to light that every person there on either side of the conflict is a human being. But we lose sight of that sometimes. And that's where the stories become interesting because it's about human beings trying to get through every day, survive, ultimately win this conflict and come home. Because we have to understand that um, military is intertwined with American society. It's inextricably tied to American society. Because of that, you've got all kinds of beautiful stories that need to be told, and that's what we're doing. Couldn't have said it better myself, man. Well put. Well, congratulations. Um, I think everyone's going to love your character. I did. I've seen two episodes. Loved it, so thank you very much. I hate commanding medical units. You get away with murder because you can do something I can't. Every time I'm in the OR, I feel like a eunuch at an orch. Useless. And that's not what I'm used to. Well, Colonel Harland Austin runs the base. He is the CO. He is the commander. If there is a human being on the base, they answer to him, period. He comes from a long line of soldiers. He doesn't know how to do anything else. It's his job to keep people alive. And when he fails, people die. While you're on my base, you follow my orders. Yes, Colonel. Damn right. He understands that everybody under his command has their thing that they have to do to get through the day, to stay sane, to stay sharp. And he has to allow for that, because that's what good leaders do. Good leaders are about being tough, demanding, but ultimately fair. Military needs more people like you, not less. Let's see why I fell in love with this woman. Shut up! Sir. How you doing? How you feeling? I'm feeling great. I'm so excited for the show to premiere. Congratulations. So I was just saying to the other guys, I've, I have seen a couple of, in, a couple of episodes. Oh, I loved it. I got a little bit of a sneak peek. But for those of us who haven't seen it, how would you sort of summarize your character? My character, Major Sonia Holloway, is a real badass. <laughs> she is stern. <laughs> um, she has grown up in the military her whole life. Her father's a retired general, so she's grown up uh, knowing the military, uh, going from base to base, and this is everything she's always wanted. And this, you'll see in season one, she's thrown a bit of a curveball, and for the first time in her life, she's questioning exactly who she is and what she's been doing her whole life, um, and she has a bit of an awakening. And so it's a really beautiful moment for to play somebody who's empowered and strong and really on the top of her game, a leader uh, who others rely on, but has a little bit of a misbehavior um, happening gotcha. behind the scenes. So it's been a lot of fun. And the fact that Roberto has created such compelling characters all around, but for, for the, the writing for the female characters, I think is especially wonderful. And it's such a joy to play with that. Gotcha. Great answer. What, was your, what would you say is, was the most difficult thing about nailing this character, about getting it down? I think, um, wow, well, you know, the challenge was, for me, I got hired uh, on a Thursday, and by Monday, I was a major in the Army performing surgery Hollywood in baby. Afghanistan. <laughs> so, you know, luckily, we have a lot of consultants on set. Um, we have amazing vets that we've talked to. Our resources have been really incredible, and everybody is striving to, for authenticity and making this show absolutely as close to reality as possible. But the tone of it is fun and it's wild and we get to do really cool things at the same time that are um, a little bit naughty. <laughs> so, that can't really exciting. Can't wait for you guys to see it. <laughs> nice. And, uh, and really quick, can you, what do you think people are going to love most about this series? Oh, I think it's going to be yeah, exciting for people um, to see a fresh take on a military show that's also a medical show. Um, 
there's drama, there's comedy, but the scale of the show is massive. It looks like a big feature film, and you know, with Ron Howard and Brian Grazer um, on board, it's it's got that epic, amazing, exciting, adventurous feel to it. So I think people are going to be entertained. They're going to have fun, and they're going to appreciate the cool twist they put on this type of genre. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, really appreciate so it. Of course, of course. All right, guys, you saw it. We are officially wrapped on the premiere of 68 Whiskey. It's going to be on every Wednesday night. You've seen all the interviews. That guy's going crazy. Thanks for that. Wow. Uh, Wednesday nights, guys, make sure you check it out. I've seen it. It's awesome. Have a great night. See you soon.